comes as little surprise to me that a dangerous method continues many of David Cronenberg's major concerns that we've been exploring way back to his earliest cinema, first being that the idea of sexuality is related to disease, and perhaps most importantly, the key concern throughout Cronenberg's cinema is that disease is not merely a destructive act, but also a creative element in the world. And in this case, it's quite interesting because a dangerous method uses historical figures, Sigmund Freud, Carl Jung, and Sabina Spielrein. And he's using these people to explore the idea that destructive acts can be a source of pleasure. I think the obvious thing is that sexual pleasure is a, a key element in the film, but it's not just about sexual pleasure. There's also the destructive pleasure that one levels at oneself. So for instance, there's a, a scene in the film where Freud and Jung are on their famous boat ride to America, and Carl Jung relates a dream, expecting that Freud will reciprocate. But Freud refuses, saying that to tell one of his dreams would, would destroy his authority. Now, it doesn't play out this way in the film. In the uh, apocryphal story, Freud refuses to tell a dream because he doesn't want to uh, give over his authority. But um, Jung says, I'm afraid, dear sir, you already have. That line comes later in the film uh, that Cronenberg offers us. But the idea really is, in Viggo Mortensen's performance, is that he shows this bizarre pleasure at this obviously self-destructive act and gives the sense that Freud knows what he's doing in that moment at some level in his consciousness and is taking a pleasure from it. But he's also doing it without really knowing what he's doing. And it's a very interesting scene because Freud, in his general course on psychoanalysis, remarks at the very beginning that for all his knowledge of the unconscious, he still caught himself acting unconsciously all the time. And he also even suggests that life hasn't really gotten any better by becoming aware of this. If anything, being so self-aware was even more punishing in a sense because you have an even harder time forgiving yourself for what you do when you know not what you do. So the idea here really is that we have another key tension throughout the Cronenberg canon, and that's the paradoxical situation in which the cure is always a poison and the poison is always also the cure. And all of this is related to the fundamental idea in Cronenberg's cinema that disease is something creative. So what you essentially are getting is that um, the psychoanalysis are using something about disease to create theory out of it and also to create new ways of living their own lives. And Jung, much more than Freud in A Dangerous Method, is shown throughout the film to be developing ideas about psychoanalysis, and that's what he calls it, is he wants to call it is psychoanalysis, but he ultimately submits to Freud's idea that psychoanalysis sounds better and is a more logical term based on some sort of philo philological basis. But the point is, is that Jung is really working in response to his own self-identified psychoses and he creatively responds to his own illness with psychoanalytical or psychoanalytical ideas. And what becomes uh, so evident is that his revelations about psychoanalysis or psychoanalysis is that they cause him to act in ways that are then destructive. So even as he's responding to disease in a creative way by building new theories, the outcome of having come to these re revelations leads him to do um, destructive things, or at least things that seem to be destructive within the boundaries of his contemporary society, conventional marriage, etc. And that's another key thing in Cronenberg cinema is that you have revealed in very, very stark detail the pressure that institutions and social conventions press down upon the individual psyche. So one of the things we come to realize throughout the film is that even though the most exciting and useful developments in psychoanalysis seem to cause more suffering and pain than they than they cure, at the same time there still is progression, and progression is another key uh, theme in this film. The difference between Carl Jung and, and Freud, however, in the sense of this theme of progression, is that Freud did not accept transcendental, transcendental meaning. You know, there's nothing to progress towards other than healing in our immediate circumstances by becoming aware of our repressed desires. And of course, you often can't even do that. There's a line that, you know, the best thing you can realize is that you can't ever cure them. 
Whereas Jung, on the other hand, thought there were transcendent possibilities, and he saw in psycho psychoanalysis a, a means of connecting with essences and larger patterns and forces that exist outside of the self, and building a new character by tapping into these archetypes. Now, one review of the film I read on IMDb criticized a dangerous method for trying to convey an encyclopedic definition of psychoanalysis. And I think I see what this reviewer means, because the dialogues do at times feel very weighted down by technical language. But at the same time, Jung and Freud and Spielrein were academics, and they were medical professionals, so it's completely in line with their biographical histories that they would be seeking definitions for what counts as psychoanalysis and talking to each other in this very elevated way. And these ideas would have played a huge part in their conversations and their correspondences. So... Ultimately, I think the film is a great portrait, mostly of Jung and his desire for uncertainty in the face of Freud's insistence that he had authority over a very clear and cut picture of how the mind worked, which is essentially a kind of hydraulic system in which the superego and the ego and the id uh, play pipe work on each other, and when one thing builds up, it causes certain blockage and so on and so on. And Freud was very certain about this. But the A Dangerous Method is really, really focused on Jung's desire for uncertainty rather than certainty. And so what we really see is how his clash with Freud helped him define that need. He didn't do it on his own. There's a real sense, maybe even a Jungian sense in the film, that Freud and Jung call each other into existence. And there's a kind of gap between them that doesn't ever come to connection, but it it's, it's also connected so much that they push each other apart like magnets and ultimately they continue to collaborate on the project of defining psychoanalysis through their opposition. Now mixed up in all of this is the character of S Sabina Spielrein and she starts in the movie as one of Jung's patients and then quickly becomes his assistant before becoming a psychoanalyst, a psychoanalyst in her own right. And the fascinating thing I found about this setup is how closely it resembles one of Cronenberg's stock story architectures. And this is the one where we, it's an architecture we see very strongly in Scanners and Videodrome and especially Existence, just to name a few. And this is a story architecture in which we have a rogue agent who travels between two institutions and often has information from one that the other shouldn't have or someone doesn't want the other person to have. So we could think, just to give a very specific example, of antenna research and cortical systematics in existence, in which Allegra Geller has information and technology she developed with one uh, video game corporation, and for various reasons finds herself courted by the other, trying to extract that information. And this is exactly what happens in A Dangerous Method. Spielrein has developed certain tendencies in thinking with Jung, and then she wants to go to Freud, and he has certain sexual jealousies about the idea of Spielrein being with Freud, but it's also that his ideas are so in conflict, and for them to be brought over to the, to the quote-unquote enemy uh, corporation, uh, this becomes deeply disturbing to him, and of course she then brings Freud back into his life later in a certain way. So, You'll find in many Cronenberg films precisely what we find in A Dangerous Method, which is the transfer of knowledge brokered and fought for by these independent bodies throughout the figure of a contested agent. And in this case, that agent is Sabina Spielrein. Spielrein and Jung and Freud represent the institutional rubrics which the agent must infiltrate as part of her own process of discovering forbidden knowledge. And it's really her kind of opportunism that shows the foolishness, ultimately the foolishness of both Jung and Freud, both of whom pine after ideals, whereas Spielrein is the only character smart enough to capitalize on all the pleasures the moment has to offer, particularly when you have found a way to shuck the shackles of your identity using these psychoanalytical ideas. And that's something that neither Freud nor Jung ever come close to being able to do. If anything, their discoveries shackle them even more closely to themselves.